Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarang Choi and I am an international medical graduate who applied for Match 2024. I am here today to share my journey with you. The story is going to be about from the beginning of when I started my journey until where I am now. So if you're interested in hearing what happened and where I am now, then sit back, relax, grab a tea and join me on this conversation. So those of you who have been following my journey might already know a little bit about me, but basically I am a Korean citizen who attended medical school in the Philippines because I actually grew up in the Philippines. Going into medical school in the Philippines, I already knew that I won't be able to practice medicine in the Philippines. And so I knew that my option would be United States. And so during medical school, I did prepare, I did study for USMLE. And then upon graduating from medical school in July, 2020, I went back to Korea because it was the pandemic and I started preparing for step one intensively. And, uh, but unfortunately, I did not have my diploma until January of 2021. And so I wasn't able to schedule an exam until then. And by the time I got those papers in, there were not a lot of slots. So I was able to schedule my step one exam for May 2021. And then I took my exam then but I had brain fog secondary to COVID. And so my test result was not the best. And after that exam, I had to discern it was that bad. Like I had to discern whether to continue the journey or not. And so I had to think through, I had to talk with family. And then after much thought, I decided to continue the journey. I thought that if I don't give up, I will probably make it. And so I decided to keep going. In June, I took my OET exam. And then in July, I started planning ahead. So I knew that I had to do a US clinical experience. And so I searched online, applied, and then I traveled to the US in July. And then I did my clinical experience in August for six weeks. And that is when I also got to complete my pathway six. And um, because my rotations and traveling has been hindering my step two CK preparation, I after I was done with the rotation, I decided to take time to actually prepare for my step two CK. So I started, studied intensively, probably like around 12 hours a day for like two months. And I took my step two CK exam November, 2021, first week of November. And then, so I passed that exam. And then December of that year, I got my ECFMG certificate. So I was really grateful. And I also have a video here, getting my ECFMG certificate. So you guys can watch it here. So I was really grateful. I was done with step one, step two CK, and then I had my certificate. And the next thing, and I also made a video, I was debating whether to apply that year or not with a delayed step two CK, but I decided not to. Um, and I think that was great. And then because I was going to apply the following year for match 2023 and had a lot of time left after my exam, I came, I went back to Korea and I thought I have, I was thinking I should work so that I can make some money. I don't, I didn't have any financial support. It was all from my own earnings and everything. So I, uh, went back to Korea. I applied for jobs while I was still in the U S. Upon returning to Korea in January, I started work right away and I was teaching English at an academy. And during that time I was teaching, I got a message from a senior of mine in from my medical school and told me who told me that there's an opportunity for US clinical experience um, in Florida who will be giving me lodging and all these things. And so upon much consideration, I thought if I am applying for a match, in the US, it would be better for me to be in the US clinical setting than be in Korea teaching English. So after a lot of thought, even though I don't have any family, friends or anyone uh, in Florida and I didn't know the doctor at all, I've never met her, I contacted the doctor and then decided to go. And so with the money I earned from the academy, I bought my ticket, I bought everything and then I flew to Florida in March, first week of March. And I was there for four months until July and um, I learned a lot of things from there. I was really grateful, but at the same time, the environment was not the best for me. So 
I think my, my mental health was compromised a little bit. And so I prayed really hard. I wanted to come to the Northeastern area or New York or wherever my friends are. I have my college best friend here. And so I prayed, Lord, I really want to go back up north if I could, if there's an opportunity to do so. And so thankfully, um, through connection as well, someone told me that there's a doctor who needs help at his clinic. And so I messaged them, emailed them, and then communicated. And then I was told to come and so I told the doctor and the doctor told me that I uh, thought that that would be best for me because you know uh, New York is the most IMG friendly state and so there are tons of IMGs hospitals are very IMG friendly and so having an experience in New York is actually really really great so and she knew that because she also came from the Philippines so I flew to New York in July and then started uh, my rotation there uh, at a pediatric clinic in Queens, New York, and that has also been such a blessing for me. The doctor has been amazing. He's been very patient. He has a lot of patients, and so it's actually a really, really busy clinic. And um, and so I continued that, continued um, working and writing paper, publishing in the meantime, and also um, reaching out to connections and making more connections, and also going to conferences and and such. And I applied for a match 2023. And if you've been following my journey, you probably have watched this video. I had interviews um, because my score was not that great. I had three interviews that year. And they were actually through connections. Oh, two were through connections. One was um, not through connection, but um, I thought I did well on my interviews but I guess it was not good enough or maybe the programs did not rank me high enough for me to match. And so I unfortunately, unfortunately did not match it that year. And this is my video seeing my match results. And that week I actually went through SOAP and it was really, really painful experience. If you watch this, the video, you will probably, it's like, it's painful. Um, I cried a lot that week when I found out that I didn't match. And believe me, before I saw the results, I told myself whether I match or not, I'll be fine. It's okay. Like I will just keep on going and I will not give up and I'll make it. But when I saw the result, it was just like devastating and really sad. And I did my best through SOAP. You know, I had interviews through SOAP, um, but in the end, it, I didn't make it. And even after SOAP was done, um, there's like post-match, like, you know, people who drop out of their um, programs, you know, suddenly the program has a slot open and so uh, things like that happen. So I was like scrambling and um, trying really hard to th do things that could increase my chances, either look for a position out of the match or increase my chances, do things that will increase my chances of matching the following year when I applied, right? And so I applied for research positions. I applied and I reached out. I sent emails to programs that were open that had positions, but it was really hard. It was a challenging time. And I connected with people who also went through SOAP because I, we met through online, uh, we met through the interview and someone reached out to me and we were communicating and we were sharing each other's feelings. And that was really helpful because we were feeling the same things. You know, it's just, um, it almost felt like, programs were playing with our heart because, um, you know, they would say, they would respond to you. They would say, you know, you're great and all that. But then in the end, it didn't make it. you didn't make it. And, you know, um, you may feel like it went well, but you just never know what the result's going to be. Sometimes they seem like really strict and um, no emotion, but they might actually like you. They may seem like enthusiastic, but they might actually not rank you high or things like that. So it's just really like all these things go on in the match process but yeah so then i applied for research because i thought that research should be a great way to increase my chances of matching the following year when i applied and and i shared this in one of my baby videos as well i actually got an offer from mayo clinic to do a research but it was an unpaid position and for me um and i was you know in new york then and i was really debating because it was Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, and they were not going to pay me. And I was thinking I will have to 
pay for my lodging, pay for my meals. But if they're not paying me as while I'm working there as a research trainee or research assistant, it will be really hard for me to survive because I have no one supporting me financially and I need to survive on my own and such. And so I was thinking, oh my gosh, I, I'm not sure if I, it will be good for me going there. And because it was such a prestigious hospital and position, I had a hard time letting go. And I, it took me so much time to really pray and discern whether to take the position or not. Because I knew that if I took the position, I will definitely struggle uh, one way or another. Um, but my mentors were telling me to just take it, just go for it, just struggle for one year and like, you know, just do it. But then a part of me was really saying, I don't think it's a good, great, good idea. So I know you guys are probably thinking like, oh my gosh, how can you say no to that position, right? Um, but yes, I did. I thought to myself that my mental health and my health is priority and I knew that staying in Europe will be better for me. So I decided to look for opportunities here instead because I have my friends here and uh, family here. And so, and looking back, and you know, at that time when I was making this decision, I had no idea what was going to happen in the future. So it was a really hard decision to make. But looking back, I made an amazing decision because um, I was here on a B1B2 visa and because I stayed here in New York, I did find other opportunities for myself. And so I started working at One Brooklyn Health as a clinical instructor um, and that, you know, I got to look uh, find that through a connection as well. And it's been great, like being able to teach students, uh, medical students and you know, be a clinical instructor there and also um, rotate at an internal medicine clinic as well. And so I made, I found opportunities uh, and also it's also God's grace. And looking back, not matching in match 22 and 3 might have been such a big blessing in disguise because I met my current husband in May of that year and uh, we got married in November and now I am my status is actually um, stable because we were able to apply for I was able to apply for a green card through my husband and I don't need to worry about getting J J1 visa or H1B for March 2024 when I applied I was able to put that I don't need a visa so the things that changed since then was I was able to work at One Brooklyn Health where I got to teach students, which was a big part of, um, I think a lot of programs like to see that you're able to teach and at, you know, in New York, in US setting. And also uh, compared to March, 2023, I actually practiced my interview skills extensively. So there was someone who helped me out we did four hours at a time. So I practiced, practiced, practiced repeatedly, repeatedly all the common questions. And I didn't realize that, you know, last year I thought I, I'm pretty good in communicating and talking and all that, but I didn't know that there were certain ways you could answer questions in a way that is very satisfying for the interviewer. I realized like, wow, it makes such a big difference practicing your interview skills and so when you actually have your interview you are able to speak and answer the questions the way they want to hear the things they want to hear and of course it's not and people say people always say just be yourself but you also want to be eloquent and be able to share things from your profile that will impress them so yeah I practiced, 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 and this year, well, last year, so for match 2024, I ended up having five interviews, which is, um, I guess, two more than last year, uh, and I did definitely do way better in my interviews than I did last year, and I could tell from their response, the people who were interviewing me, I could tell they're very impressed, they're very happy, and they are very interested in me to the extent that they will ask me how interested I am in their program because they want to have me. That's how good my interviews were because I practiced that much. And I was so grateful for the person who 
gave me that time, she really helped me. So I did well in all my interviews and on my last one, <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, I, um, on my last interview, it's very personal, so I don't think I can share in specific detail, but to give you guys the result and good news, I actually pre-matched into Brookfield Hospital Medical Center, and so I will be, I will be arrested this coming July. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So um, please share this joy with me, and for those of you who's been following my journey, do and for those of you who commented on my March 2023 video where I was in pain, those who commented there, telling me that you will be praying for me. Your prayers have been answered and I'm so grateful for all of your support, your encouragement, your messages, your comments and all the people I met on Twitter who were out there willing to help me out through all of the diff challenging seasons I went through. Thank you. I want to thank you. And all of the these, it was really not due to my personal strength or my skill or my because I'm great or whatever nothing none of that but really I want to praise God for what he has done um, in my life and for answering my prayers and for keeping his promises in my life and I know that he will be with me throughout my residence, residency years which is really exciting but also can be a little scary but I know that he will carry me through and that he will walk by me and be with me throughout my journey and so if you are also on this journey I just want to encourage you give you hope and let you know that if you don't give up you will get there too and don't lose hope and for those of, those of you and for those of you who applied for match 2024 and are you know in this time where it's so hard to wait until march 11th when you find out whether you match or not it is a challenging time i remember i tried not to think about anything during that time last year and um it's not easy but stay strong and remember to remind yourself whatever the result may be, you will be okay. You will respond to whatever results you see. You will celebrate if you make it. If not, you will reassess and you will reapply. And I know that it's easier said than done, but I believe in you. I believe in all of you. And so continue to strive, never lose hope and do persevere. Thank you so much guys for following my journey all throughout this years and I hope to be able to share my residency journey with you as well if I do have the time to do so. Um, so yeah, thank you guys and 